Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers. Welcome to a new Doctor Who video for today. So, I just want to say thank you to another sci-fi guy for allowing me to make this reply. Now, in in his video, he hasn't done one of what's the worst story in the 1960s because he hasn't seen all the 1960s. Um, I'm going to stick to the 1970s as well because I want a lot of the 60s stories to become animated before I do the video of what's my worst 1960s stories. I want to kind of make this about the 70s because not we haven't seen a lot of the 1960s stories. Yes, I have got a big chunk of it on the shelf full of animation, CDs and the normal adventures. But I'm not really going to talk about the 1960s. I'm just going to make this about the 1970s. So, jumping into season 7, which is John Pertwee's first season, I had to put The Ambassadors of Death. The Ambassadors of Death, I think it is too long of a story. It's not as great as a story. I think it drags out over seven parts. If it was a four-parter, I really think it would have been better. If it was a five-parter, yeah, okay, but not a seven-part story. There are some things that drag out in it, like the car chase with Elizabeth Shaw, where she's driving Bessie, and you've got the people behind her trying to chase after her, and she literally gets out of Bessie, try to do a runner, and then she ends up getting caught, and then you just end on that cliffhanger there. I think that was no need of it. The one thing I have to say that is a possibility I actually enjoyed is the title bits, because when you get into the title sequence, and then you get into like a little bit of it, and then it just goes meow, in big letters saying the ambassadors of death i really enjoyed that because it literally splits the title sequence into two little bits um season eight i've had to put connery in space connery in space i don't really like the story i think it's the weakest out of season eight because season eight i really enjoy i love tale of the Vo um autons i love um the mind of evil I even loved The Claws of Axos, because The Claws of Axos was my first John Purpose story I ever watched, and I did enjoy it. And The Demons, or Daemons, whatever it's called, I do enjoy that story as well. But I just don't really like the economy in space that much. Season 9 is The Mutants. The Mutants is because of one little reason. I cannot make it past episode 2. I've tried watching it, I just can't get through it i think it's a bit boring john pertwee as long as you do john pertwee or katie manningan i just think it's the way the it's scripted i don't think it's a great script i don't think the way it was directed was great i just don't really like it season 10 i've had to put frontier in space frontier in space i do enjoy a little bit it's one of the, it's not as bad it's not even the worst but it's just it doesn't make the season match up with the rest of the season because I love the three Doctors. I love Carnival kind of of Monsters. I love Planet of the Daleks. Planet of the Daleks was my first Dalek story I ever watched with John Pertwee and I love it and I still do. And The Green Death, I absolutely enjoy. But Frontier in Space, I think it's because they bring back the Ogrons that work for the Daleks. I don't really think they're they working with the Master really works. The Master doesn't need people to work with him to get his way. He just doesn't and i don't get why he just uses the ogrons from the daleks even though he's still working for the daleks i don't know why the daleks just let him have the ogrons so i don't really get i don't know why the master just ended up having the ogrons working for him but it does have an end on that good cliffhanger where you just see the doctor getting shot and he she goes doctor what are you doing telepathic circuits send a message to the time lords i do like that cliffhanger Season 11, I've had to put Death to the Daleks, because the Death to the Daleks, the Daleks seem very, very weak in this story. Yes, they've had the weapons taken off them, it doesn't make them that weak, but when you see the, the Axon, not Axons, the, the aliens with the hoodies and the big giant eyes like them, when you see them go up to a Dalek with bow and arrows and the Dalek literally just ends up blowing up anyway, makes no sense, because the Dalek, Dalek Amy is supposed to be the strongest material in the universe. And then it should just go up to a Dalek domes, and the Dalek's just there going, exterminate, exterminate, like that. And then it's just there banging on the dome, and the Dalek just goes, Pfft, like that. I just don't really get how that really happened. Season 12, for Tom Baker's first season, I've had to put Revenge of the Sun Men. Again, at season 12, I really enjoy season 12. I even got it on Blu-ray, VHS, and DVD. Season 12, I just don't really like that much 
No, I can't really say that. Because season 12 I do enjoy. But this story does make season 12 not a great story for this season. It's Revenge of the Cybermen. I like the fact they've gone back to not the Nether Beacon. I really think that that's a great part. I think the Cybermen are very too... Not as great as they should be. I mean, yes, they've gone to Nether Beacon so they can try and destroy the... Vogan, the planet of gold, because of their with their help during the cyber wars, which we don't really know much about the cyber wars. We know little bits and dabs that have been picked out over Doctor Who's history. I believe this is the first, first time the cyber wars was mentioned in Doctor Who. I'm not too sure about that. It's over this one or the wheel in space, but the wheel in space is missing, so hopefully that gets animated soon. But I think the cyber designs are pretty good. I like the cyber designs. It like it looks like a big massive upgrade from when we last saw them in the invasion. I like the cyber leader because this is the very first time we see a cyber leader in in Doctor Who. And I do enjoy the cyber leader. I think he gives a great performance. But the rest of the story, I think it's a bit naff in a way. I, it, do, it doesn't feel like a big connection to Doctor Who, like into it. It doesn't feel like a big connection. Yes, because if you watch season 12, you go from Robot, then you've got Ark in Space, Santon Experiment, Genesis of the Dark, with the Time Lords to the Doctor, Sarah Jane and Harry, to Skyro, and then you go straight to this story. Hmm. Not really a good point, is it? I just don't like the story. Season 13, it is the Android Invasion. The Android Invasion, I find completely... Boring, and I'm sorry to say that. I just find it boring. Boring. I don't really like the Android Invasion that much. I've already watched it uh, a couple of months ago, and I've rebought the box set the, of the unit files. Um, the only thing about it is when the Doctor goes, "These aren't real trees," and you want to the real server. So when she literally tries to kill the Doctor, he literally knocks her down, and then her f Android face comes off, and you just see the Android, and it ends on that cliffhanger. I'd like the way the Doctor puts Sarah Jane up in the tree to try and keep her safe, but she was very stupid to climb down and then she gets captured. So one thing I have to say, season 14 it is the Masker Man Dragler. The Masker Man Dragler sees the Doctor going get in the TARDIS, taking Sarah Jane around the TARDIS, and then he shows her the secondary console room because he wants to decorate the TARDIS, which he does through season 14. Because in season 14, he ends, season 15, he ends up getting a new con He goes back to the old console room. That's had a big, massive upgrade. So when he's there and the TARDIS ends up getting pulled into the Mad, Dra Mad Dragler Helix, the Doctor and Sarah Jane end up leaving the TARDIS door open and the Mad Dragler Helix hitches a ride to Earth in Italy and it causes a lot of problems on Earth. It's just not a great story and for the, the Doctor to bring the Mad, Dra Mad Dragler Helix is in, it, it is the Doctor's fault. Really, it's on Earth. But he does defeat it, I have to say. Season 15, it is the Invasion of Time. Um, yes, this is a Santaran story, but the Santarans are only in for two episodes out of six. The Vervans, I think they are not a great alien race. If they were to come back, I would be like, yeah, okay, they're back. I'm not a big, ooh, they're back. Um, but when you watch, but the Santarans are different, but because of the Vervans invading Gallifrey, that the doc that they've got the doctor to destroy the great barrier that protects Gallifrey. It easily shows Gallifrey can be easily invaded. Specifically when they use the doctor and they control his mind and then read his mind. And then when the Santarans invade uh, it, after the Vervans, the time to get rid of the Vervoids, the Vervans, um the Doctor is there to the Time Lords bragging and then everybody stops and looks. And the Santarans are just there walking into the um Capricor. The Capricor. I just don't really like this story. And the fact is, Leela leaves in this story as well. You you would have thought it would have built up a big dramatic stuff for Leela just so she could say, I'm I'm leaving you, Doctor. But no, she just goes, the Doctor just goes, you can be Leela. Now, what? I'm staying here. What? Here? And then she pulls her hand, grabs Andrew's hand. And the Doctor goes, ah, you coming here now? No, negative. I remain. What? Here? Affirmative. What for? To look after the mistress. Now, K9 had the bit of it, because it's K9 Mark 1. They had a bit... During Season 15, they had a massive problem with the original K9 prop. 
because it was a bit too big to fit into the actual TARDIS door. So they made a Mark II version for seasons 16, 17, which does an 18, but it does get like reintroduced in the end of this story as well. But for Leela, play, playing by Louise Jameson, I don't know why she left. It just feels so suddenly. It doesn't really build it up. It's just like that last couple of minutes she just says, I'm staying here. It looks like, well, but you're an alien. Aliens weren't allowed to go to Gallifrey in the previous in season fourteen, in the ha Hand of Fear. The Doctor gets a call from Gallifrey and he says he can't take Sarah to Gallifrey, so he leaves Sarah Jane on Earth. But then a year later, he takes Leela to Gallifrey and she and he lets her stay on Gallifrey. It makes an absolutely no sense. Why Sarah Jane weren't allowed and Leela was? It just makes no sense. And it's literally a season in between. That's what I've got to say. Season 16 is the Androids of Tara. I don't like this story as much as the rest of the stories. When I compare season 16, I really enjoyed Pirate Planet. I really enjoyed the Stones of Blood. And I really enjoyed the Armageddon Factor. Power of Crawl, I enjoy a little bit. I do like the script. I think the script is good because it's a Bob Holmes script. I really like I do like it, but I think some of the bad like, effects for it is totally bad. But I still much enjoy it for that. But the Andrew Zatara and the Reboss Operation, I find them very two boring stories of the season. I just don't really connect with those stories that much. That's the one thing I have to say about that. Season 17 it is Destiny of the Daleks. Destiny of the Daleks is not one that I would recommend for season 17. Even though it is coming out on Blu-ray, I'm hoping the Blu-ray does change my mind on it. I don't like the special effects for it. Now, I didn't even know it had special effects until another sci-fi guy told me on one of his previous videos. I believe it was early in the year. I went back and we watched the new special effects and I think they're great. But when you watch the original stuff, it's just not. And again, the Daleks seem very, very weak in the story because they go to Scarrow. They look for their creator, Davros. They want him to make a big, giant, super battle computer to fight against the Mavellans. The Mavellans want the Doctor to do exactly the same. It just makes no point. And Terry Nation even messes up because he even uses the words one race of robots against another race of robots. The Daleks aren't robots. They are mutant Khalids. The Khalids are very, very proper mutated into Daleks. So in like a little bit of a tank. <sighs> That's the one thing. So this is the video of the what is the worst stories in each season of of the 70s Doctor Who. So as a little bonus now, I'm going to literally mention season the 60s. So for the 60s, season 1, I've put Edge of Destruction. Season 2, The Space Museum. Season 3, The Gunfighters, because I really don't like The Gunfighters. The Gunfighters is, is absolutely terrible. It's a bad heart of story. Season 4 is The Underwater Menace, because I have that, that is only because... I cannot watch the DVD. Episodes 1 and 4 are telly snaps with um, the soundtrack. And I really don't like that. I've tried watching it. Uh, episodes 2 and 3 ain't that good either. Just not that good either. I think if it was animated, episode 1 and 4, in my opinion, might change on it. But I'm not too sure. Season 5 is the Ice Warriors. Now, I got told the Ice Warriors is a great a bit, like introduction story to the Ice Warriors. But when I compare this one and to the next season, which is the Caesar Death, the Caesar Death is a much more better Ice Warriors story than the Ice Warriors. I don't really like this story. I believe this it out of out of Troughton's run. This is the weakest story from season five. And then of course, jumping into season six, it is the Dominators. The Dominators, I just don't really like. I don't like the Quarks. I think they're very very. Stupid looking little robot things. But when you get into Doctor Who and you see robots. And then you just go into this story and they're like. Are they supposed to be looking cute? Because they're not. They're just not. And then when you see them like go like that. And then they flip open their arms like that. And you see them walking. It's just like what? That's the one thing about it. So that is the worst stories from each season of the 1970s and the 1960s. Let me know in the comments what you think. What is your worst favorite? What is your worst story from each season of the 70s and 60s? Let me know and join me for another video where I talk about the worst stories from the 1980s, which will be coming out later on today as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day.